testimony. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. Lord, we thank you that you've made us overcomers. Hallelujah. By your blood and by our testimony of your goodness, Lord. So we're here to worship you tonight, God. To magnify you in this place. To lift you high. Thank you, Jesus. I gotta start in the right key, don't I?
worship you, King of kings, oh, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands. Father, we thank you that you are worthy, you are mighty, and you are powerful, and you are strong. We bless your name tonight. Amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated this evening. Amen. Well, we want to go to the Lord together in prayer. And if you have a uh, prayer request you would like to share with us, uh, go ahead and share that request tonight. Amen. Is there any requests tonight? Oh, Preston? Oh, yes, for me and Poppy. Amen. Uh, I'd like the church to pray with me for my mother. She's in the hospital, and oh. they say she has a virus. Okay, well, we'll pray for Ruby's mother tonight. Lord, touch her. Amen. Any others tonight? Go ahead, brother. I had a customer of mine I saw the other day. I hadn't seen him in a long time. I talked to him. And he's a young guy. He's like in his 40s. And he's telling me he has to have an open heart surgery. He may be a candidate for a heart transplant. So I told him, I said, I got a church that prays. I'd like to pray for you. And I just touch you. We'll pray for him tonight. Lord, will touch him. Amen. Amen. Any other requests tonight that you'd like to share? Remember Jeanette Bennett in your prayer. She's in recovering in the uh, nursing home tonight. Amen. Unspoken requests by lifting up your hands. The Lord knows all those tonight too. Amen. Let's all pray together. Father, we just come before you tonight, Lord, and we lift to you these needs. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you hear every one of these needs that are spoken and unspoken. And I thank you, Lord, that you're able to heal, you're able to deliver, you're able to set free, you're able to work out situations and negotiation, Father. You're able to put into place and practice exactly what needs to happen. And Lord, we pray tonight that you would meet these needs. Thank you, Lord, that you're a healer. We pray tonight for Sister Ruby's mother, that you would touch her, that if a father, you'll give her strength in her body. Uh, be with our uh, brother Mike's uh, customer, Lord. Uh, Lord, touch Nick in his heart tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, touch Preston's request. Help uh, uh, help his request, Lord, as we pray for Nee and Poppy tonight. We pray for them, that you be with them and help them through these situations. Lord, I thank you tonight that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask, thank, imagine, or fathom. So, Lord, we just give these requests to you, and we believe you, Lord, that you're able to meet needs. Thank you for helping uh, Jeanette, Lord, tonight. We just pray for continued healing and strength in her body. Father, we give you all the th thanks and praise for the miracles you're working in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, let's have a Brother Mike. If you want to come, we'll receive this evening's offering. And uh, as we uh, have our ushers coming to receive our evening offering, thank you for giving today. And uh, thank you uh, as you always support missions and tithing and offerings and uh, projects and special needs. We always appreciate every uh, gift that's sown because it continues to help uh, uh, our church or community in our community and around the world uh, in different parts uh, to help uh, their, uh, their areas and to bring hope and Jesus to those. So thank you very much for giving tonight. Brother Clyde, would you bless our offering this evening as we uh, receive? Amen. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Oh, I will bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless 
God. Thank you, musicians and uh, praise team. We appreciate you all tonight. Amen. Uh, well, just remember this week, if you have any yard sale items you'd like to donate, uh, you can bring them by. We have a, a place set up for you out there. You can bring them by. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, some things going on in the bulletin. Uh, pick one of those up. You can make sure you get all the upcoming dates down. And uh, we got a lot of great things going to be happening this month here. So it's a great uh, and exciting time that we have coming up. So make sure you get one to get all the dates. And then also, uh, before uh, Brother Ray comes tonight, we have a special song that's going to be sung to you by Brother Dwayne. So as he comes tonight, would you give him a good hand as he comes to sing for you tonight? Amen. And I appreciate Brother Dwayne because I love his blowing the shofar. And every time we do uh, uh, Days of Elijah, I'm so glad he blows that shofar for us. Amen. Amen. I want to sing a song about a woman in Scripture that I have always felt sorry for. That she was embarrassed in public. They didn't care about what was going on. They were just trying to trick Jesus. But Jesus come along one day and showed her mercy and brought her salvation. Proud worshippers scorn for her sin Was this poor wanderer rudely brought in Then came the Pharisees anxious to see What the meek Nazarene's verdict would be Still cried the Pharisees, pray, Master, pray. What shall we do with her? What dost thou say? Spoke he rebukingly, let the first stone come from the sinless hand and thus alone. Cheeks blushing with their shame Turned each about And from his presence Walked silently out Then saw he standing there Head bended low She whom the world despised He saw her tears flow Most tenderly, pray, Master, pray. What hath the need? Nay, Master, nay. May all for thy pardon thee, so sick and sore. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and send no Precious words divine Falling from the lips of mercy Like the sweetest chime Wonderful words of Jesus Sing them more and more Neither do I condemn thee Go and sin no more Neither do I condemn thee that song tonight. Amen. All right. Well, as uh, we get ready to open up the Bible tonight and uh, hear a word of the Lord, let's give Brother Ray a good hand as he comes up tonight to bless you. Amen. With a good sermon. Amen. Thank you for speaking tonight, Brother Ray. It's so good to be able to have him speak. You know, for a long time, he's been having a work schedule that's not been letting him uh, be able to speak. But uh, finally, that's what I said. I said, Brother Ray, are you... Um, 
uh, working nights or weekends this coming week. So he said, no, he's not doing that anymore. So I said, well, it's a great week for him to preach for us. So thank you, Brother Ray, for preaching tonight. Yes, thank you, Brother Brian. Bless you. Appreciate you. Amen. It's, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. You don't realize sometimes how much you miss it until uh, work tells you, oh, no, sorry, you have to be here. And, you know, when I hired into my previous employer, I told him, you know, I don't want to work Sundays. I mean, I understand that sometimes that happens and business comes first, and I don't want to not get my jet, not get hired because I refuse to work Sundays. And uh, they, oh no, no, we we appreciate that, we like that. And then uh, a few months in, they decided that uh, it was a little more important to work Sundays than it was to, <laughs> for me to be in church. But uh, about four months ago, I had knee surgery, and while I was out from work recovering, a job recruiter called me and asked if I was still looking for work. And I was like, uh, no, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm progressing pretty quickly here at my other job. I've been here about a year and a half now and they, they really like me. So the only problem is they keep offering me these new jobs on afternoon shift. It's like, we want to make you a supervisor on afternoons or we want to make you our setup guy on afternoon shift. So not really like day shift. She's like, well, I can get you day shift. And so I threw out a number a little bit more than what I was making. So if you can get me day shift making at least this amount of money, then I'll, I'll be interested in it. So she called me back the next day with three different jobs, and she wanted me to set up an interview. And I'm like, well, I can't go on an interview right now. I can't hardly walk. I just had knee surgery. And she's like, well, when do you go back to work? I said, well, I'll go back to work in two weeks. So I'll set you up an interview for next Thursday. You should be better then, and uh, you won't have to worry about your job interfering with going to the interview. And... I went in there. The owners are Christian. They don't work any Sundays. And uh, the, the, the plant manager was talking to me, and, and you know, he's like, well, you know, why are you looking for another job? And I told him. I said, well, because I have young kids, and uh, right now I don't see my daughter Monday through Friday. I go to work. at I have to leave my house at 2.30 to be down in Brighton by 3.30, and she don't get home until 3.40. So I don't see her after I, I drop her off at of school on Monday, and I don't see her again until Friday. You know, I can peek in and look at her sleeping, but that's about it. And so I want day shift. And he's like, well, if we hire you, you'll never have to work afternoon shift. So I was like, all right. <laughs> you know, and uh, so they, uh, they walked me around, showed me where I'd be working, um, all the the good machines in my old job, you had to come up a two, three foot platform to get up there to work, all these steps and stuff. And this machine's right down on the ground. I don't have to go up and down any steps. <laughs> it, it's good for my knee. It's, uh, it just seems to be a blessing from God. When I wasn't even looking for it, God heard my prayers. He heard my cries. And he opened the door for me. And so I do believe that it's the Lord, and I give him the praise and the glory for it. Because like I said, I wasn't looking. And so, um, but it is good to be in the house of the Lord today. And uh, as I was reading my Bible and studying a few days ago, God, uh, I was reading a devotion and uh, I was reading in Psalms and, and I didn't even realize that my Bible had gotten clicked over to the NIV. Um, I usually only read in, in King James or New King James. Um, so I, after I read it and I was getting ready to preach, I flipped over, I looked it up, and it didn't say the same thing that, I, that I'd studied. Um, it means the same thing, but it was written a little bit differently. So if you have your Bibles with you, I want to turn to Psalms chapter 60 and verse 12. Um, and I want to read what it says there. And this is David... Um, this is one of David's prayers. And, and, if, and a lot of times in the Psalms, he starts out the Psalm praising God, then he gets to where he whines and complains a little bit about everything that's going wrong. You know, but then by the end of the Psalms, he's usually encouraged himself in, in the Lord, and he, and he is, is excited and happy again. And this is where he's, he's getting excited again, and he's, and he's happy. In verse 12, it says, Through God... We shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. 
Dear Heavenly Father and Eternal King, Lord, we just thank you and praise you, God, for the opportunity to be in your house, God, and to minister your word, God. And Lord, I pray right now, God, that you would just make me an empty vessel, God, that I could pour out what you have poured into me, Lord. And we just give you the praise and the glory for everything that you've done, God. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. Now, when I first read this, it said, with God, we will gain the victory. And he will trample down our enemies. And that with God just kept standing out to me. With God. With God, we will gain the victory. With God, we shall do valiantly. And then the Lord started bringing scriptures to me where it said, with God. You know, and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. And, and Moses met with God, you know, up on the on the platform and there's on the, on the mountain and, and there's just so many different places where people are with God. And so I'm like, Lord, what, what can we do to be with you? What examples are there of people who were with God? And, and I start, so I, I started looking and, and searching for the phrase with God in the Bible. And I, I mean, it came up so many times that we'd be here for a couple weeks, me preaching to you all the places where people were with God. But as I was reading, it, it caught me off guard that one of my favorite stories in the Bible talks about being with God. And so um, back in 1 Samuel, in chapter 14, now, this has already happened, so I'm going to set the, the story for you a little bit. The Philistines had captured Israel. They had taken away all the weapons of war from everyone except for Saul and Jonathan. And so, Jonathan and his armor bearer are sitting around talking. And Jonathan says to his armor bearer, You know what? The Lord might want to do something today. He may want to do something, so let's, let's me and you go over towards that Philistine garrison and just see what the Lord's going to do. So Jonathan and his armor bearer went over, and, and Jonathan laid a fleece before the Lord. He said, when we get over there, if they yell down to us to get away, go away, then God doesn't want to do anything. But if they say, come up to us, we want to talk to you, then we're going to go up to them because God has given them into our hands. So Jonathan goes there, and they say, come up. And he goes up, and, and a great victory was won that day because Jonathan was willing to put himself out there. God didn't tell him to go. He decided, you know what, I'm going to go just and see what God's going to do. He got there, and a great victory was won that day. And, and Saul and all the army are sitting over here on the edge Hiding kind of, and and Saul had given a command. You know, it was like everybody stay here. And when they seen that there was a ruckus going on, there was a something was going on. They they counted who was not here, and it was only Jonathan and the armor bearer that was missing. So Saul, in himself, said, "If any man eats today before this battle is won, then they will be cursed." So they go to see what's happening. And Jonathan is setting this whole garrison of Philistines on their ear. He's, he's just, he's got the victory. They're running and fighting. They're hitting each other. They're doing stuff. And so the Israeli army joins them, and they chase them out, and they chase after them. And Jonathan's been fighting for a while, and they come through, and there's some honey. And he sticks the end of his rod in, in the honey, and he eats the honey. And one of the guys that's with him is like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Your dad said, cursed is the man that eats before this victory is won. And Jonathan's like, why would he say that? Look, I was weary and, and tired. But now, look, my eyes are enlightened. I'm ready to fight again. And so they went ahead and they fought and they won the victory that day. But then Saul found out about Jonathan. And he said, I have to keep my word. But see... In verse 45 there, 
It says, And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die? He who hath wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid, as the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground. For he hath wrought with God. He has worked with God. Because he was working with God, he was saved that day. See, there's, things, there's times we don't even know what's going on around us. We don't know the circumstances that have happened. And God is protecting us in the background when we don't know what's going on. But because we're working with him, because we are doing his will, he is protecting us. And Jonathan's life was saved this day because he was with God. And when we are doing things for God, we need to be a little bit zealous like Jonathan was and say, you know what? I'm going to make myself ready because I don't know what God wants to do today. But I'm going to be ready one way or the other. I'm, I'm going to be with God. I want to be where he can be with me. You know, and as, uh, as I was continuing to read and, you know, as there, there's times when we get it zealous and we want to do things for God. And, you know, it's important to be with God in every situation. You know, how do we be with God? And I thought Pastor was going to start preaching on my sermons this morning a little bit when he started talking about Jesus being the door. You know, because in John, Jesus says that I am the way. He's the way to the Father. He is the door to the sheep. He allows us to come in to be in God's presence. In his death, he rent the veil in two to the Holy of Holies so that we might come in and be in communion with God. Jesus is the key to being with God. We pursue after him. We go after him. He enables that. You know, there's um, an example in, in Judges. And in Judges chapter 20... Some really bad things happened in the previous chapter. And the men of Israel had decided that the tribe of Benjamin needed to be straightened out. So they came together and they, they asked this Levi what had happened, what, what was this terrible thing. And when he told them, they said, okay, we will not go back to our homes until this is taken care of. We will deal with this. So after they had dealt with this, in Judges 20, 18, they went before the Lord. And they said, Lord, which of us shall go up first to battle? And the Lord said to send Judah first. And they went out, and the, the tribe of Benjamin was outnumbered about 10 to 1, and they whooped the snot out of them. They prayed and asked, God, what do we do? We'll send Judah first. Who should we send first? And they sent Judah first, and they lost the battle. And I'm thinking, that, Lord, why in the world would they lose the battle? When they came to you and they prayed, who should go first? And I think sometimes in, in the church world, we get a ministry. We get an idea of something we want to do. And we get it all built up, and we, are, we start asking, Lord, how do I do this? How do I do this? Instead of asking questions like, Lord, should I do this? When should I do this? How should I do this? You know, we go, we get excited, and we want to do something, and we, it's a good thing to do. They were right, and they were justified in what they wanted to do. But they didn't go to the Lord and ask the right questions. You know, a lot of times we want the Lord to bless what we're doing. God, bless what I'm doing. God, bless what I'm doing. And I believe that it was the, the former general, uh, General Bishop, Brother Hurd, said in a meeting that we need to stop praying that God will bless what we're doing and start doing what God's blessing. You know, sometimes we get so stuck in our ways and we want God to bless what we're doing. And God, I'm doing this for you. I'm working for you. Bless what I'm doing. God, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing it in your name. Bless what I'm doing. And God's saying, you're asking the wrong questions. 
You're not asking the right questions. When we pray, we need to, to ask the right question. God, do you want me to do this? And if he says, yes, I want you to do this, then we need to ask God, how do you want me to do it? You know, when do you want me to do this? Who do you want me to surround myself when I do this? And we started asking the right questions. They came back after losing that battle. And they said, Lord, what do you want us to do? In verse 23, they came back and they prayed again. Do we go to battle? Should we do this? Shall we go to battle against our brother? And the Lord said, yeah, you should go to battle against them. And they went out and they lost again. They lost 25,000 the first day. They lost 18,000 the next day. And they came back defeated and down. And Lord, what's the problem? And then in verse 28, they fasted and they prayed. And the Lord said, go up for tomorrow. I will deliver them into your hand. See, when we fight our battles, even with God's permission, there, there can be losses. There can be defeat. The war was won, but they lost some battles along the way. But when they got serious and they fasted and they prayed and they put it in God's hands, He went with them. They went with God the third time to battle. And they won. The first two times, they got permission to go to battle, but they left God back at home. And they lost. But when they were with God, they won the battle. And I see... Paul in Romans says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And see, we don't fight the wars like they fought, like David fought. But we fight battles on daily situations. Satan isn't happy with anything that you do. You love the Lord, you serve him, any chance he gets, he's going to throw a wrench into your cog. And he wants to dismay. But we still fight those battles. So when we go in those battles with God... When we have spent time communing with God, praying with God, then he goes with us in battle. And we win those battles. Sometimes we don't even know what's going on, like Jonathan was. But God's with us, and he preserves our lives. Other times, we know when God says, I will go with you, I will deliver them in your hand tomorrow. We know God's going with us. And we know we're going to be victorious. But it's that time that we spend in prayer. It's that time we seek speaking a, seeking a relationship with Jesus. See, that's, you know, I'm going to tell on myself here. Every once in a while, my wife tells me, you know what? You've been here all day long, but I don't feel like you've been with me at all. And I wonder how many times that we come to church on a Sunday... And we walk out those doors and God says, you know what? I seen my kids in my house, but I don't feel like they were with me. You know, we come and get a bite to eat. Pastor serves up a great message and sermon. We, we nibble and we snack on what we like and we walk out the door and we forget. The whole purpose of being here is to be with God. To be with our Father. You know, it's, it's the purpose of all of this is a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not so that I can live comfortably and I can live healthy and I can live blessed. Those are benefits of a relationship with Jesus Christ, but that's not the purpose of it. The purpose is communion of relationship with Him. And we need to pursue Him and seek after Him. And as I was studying, God gave me a, a story about prayer and how prayer can change something that we don't want to even think about. In, in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 8, Abraham has heard the call to pack up and leave and go to the land where I'll show you. And he's just off wandering. And this is in Genesis chapter 12. And he says that, that Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. And this is the first place in scripture where it's spoken of someone calling upon the name of the Lord or someone praying. 
But Abraham, as he was traveling, he camped out in the middle of, of nowhere on his way to where God was sending him to the promised land. And he called upon the name of the Lord. And he called the place Bethel. And a little while later, he traveled back and he, he went back home. But he came back again in chapter 13 and 14. He said that in the same place, in the same place, Spot, he stopped to camp again. He called upon the name of the Lord, and the place was called Bethel. And Bethel means the house of the Lord. See, when we get in the house of the Lord and we pray and we call upon the name of the Lord, God remembers those prayers. God hears our prayers. Now, if you're a parent or a grandparent here, this next part ought to excite you because. Two generations later, Jacob has just stolen the birthright, and he's running from his brother. In, in Genesis 28 19, we see Jacob stopping on the way. His mother had told him, go back to my family and find a bride. He's going back the same route that his grandpa had traveled many years ago and he stops and he lays down on the ground and he sleeps and God comes to him in a dream and the name of the place where he had this dream was Bethel the place where Abraham prayed years ago God came to his grandson and spoke to him and it was pretty close to this same place where Jacob was on his way back before he met Esau where he wrestled with the Lord See, Abraham's prayers were stored up. Jacob wasn't a very religious person at this time. He was a deceiver and a supplanter. He was doing everything for Jacob. But God came to him even in the midst of this because of his grandpa's prayers. Because of his grandpa's prayers. Because Abraham walked with God because Abraham prayed with God and sought God. Jacob was visited by God. Because of Abraham's prayers a little bit later on, Jacob was able to wrestle with God. And see, from that point on, when Jacob wrestled with God, he was changed. He was no longer called Jacob deceiver. He was called Abraham because he had found favor with God. See, prayers bring us to being with God. But they can reach further than we can ever imagine. I'm sure when Abraham stopped there and he prayed, he wasn't thinking anything about his grandson. But his prayers were still there, stored up. And when Jacob was running for his life and stopped there, God visited him. And because we are with God, he will do the same for us. When we get with God and we pray and we seek his face, he will give us the victory. As David said, with God, we will gain the victory and he will trample down our enemies. We can have faith and confidence that when we are with God, we may lose a battle, but we're not going to lose the war. Because when we are with God, we can keep coming back just like, the tribe of, just like the children of Israel did. God, what did we do wrong? How do we win the victory? And he will tell us when we ask the right questions, when we pray and we seek his face. And when it's become more about our relationship with him than it is the blessings that he can give us. He will give us that victory because we are with him. <clears throat> if you'll just bow your heads with me this morning or this afternoon and this evening Lord I just thank you and I praise you God for the opportunity to be in your house God to be with you Lord this is your house we are here to be with you Lord if they came expecting to hear something great from me they may be disappointed severely but God if they came to be with you you will never disappoint them and God, I just thank you, God, for the opportunity to be here in your house, God. And I pray, Lord, God, as we spend a few minutes in prayer with you, God, that you would just allow us 
to ask you the right questions. God, for the battles in our lives, God, Lord, we want to ask you the right questions, God. What do you want us to do? How do you want us to do it, Lord? When do you want us to do it, God? And Lord, just be with each and every one of us today, God, and give us that direction that we need and that guidance that we need. And Lord, God, if there's anyone here that's not saved, that's not with God, you have the opportunity. We're going to come up and we're going to pray around these altars in just a minute. And if you don't know the Lord is your personal Savior, it's a great time to make him your Savior. And I just want to give you that opportunity. If you're here today and you'd like us to pray with you, just raise your hand. You can put it down. All eyes are closed. No one's looking around. We'll, we'll pray with you when you come down. And I figured everyone here was a Christian today. So I'm going to give you the opportunity. If the musicians will, will come, we're just going to have a little bit of time around the altar. A chance for you to get with God. I don't want anyone to leave this building without having the opportunity to spend time with God because that should be our desire to commune with him to be in his presence to worship him because that's what it's all about so as they would play if you just stand you can come up around the altar and find a place to pray Thank you. 